Hello everyone, this video is on game development using Pygame. It is a cross-platform game. All you need is Python 3 and Pygame installed on your machine. Python 3 is compulsory. It won't be functional using Python 2 because I have used new class structure which is incompatible with Python 2.7 and any version. All these sprites are designed by me and the sounds used in this game are also recorded using keyboard by me. They're all creation, just random, not a pro one, but still. So here we present Sudoku by Artelligence Machine. Before diving into the game, let's understand the basic game structure. So the first thing we have is Sudoku which is our game. So when it comes to game development, we must start thinking from the beginning that what are the basic things our game need. So the first thing which every game has is scenes. Scenes is a collection of all the display modes you are having in the game and the sudoku which is a game which is played on 9 cross 9 matrix definitely needs a board so we need a board and we also need something which is common common in the sense the things which can be accessed from different folders and we also need a special folder for graphics and which contains images and sound respectively so this is the pretty much structure of our game and planning on this structure is very important when you are developing an end product you can change the structure with time while developing but having an outlook is very important so for developing this game we used Pygame so Pygame is just a basic 2d library for developing games in Python it's not at all advanced we do have more advanced tools for developing games but Sudoku is generally a 2d game and I think Pygame is quite sufficient for that so this is the documentation page where you can find all the things included in our Pygame library one downside of using Pygame is that it's very primitive library for game development you have to implement everything by your own by writing functions by writing code there is no predefined things which you can directly import and use but it's beneficial in a way because you get to learn a lot of things let's check out the instructions for the game there are basic instructions for navigation how to play the game how to save the game description about high score and some credits let's start the game this is the main playing screen of our game and I have tried my best to keep it clean and simple on the leftmost side we have the board on right side we have clock timer uh, and this special blinking effect in time is 
pretty cool and in the lower right corner some basic navigations are displayed so when we try to fill the numbers there's also a method which keeps tracks of the last used number so we don't have to enter the number every time for example i've just entered seven seven here and uh, if i want to enter seven somewhere else then i don't need to press this 7 again I just need to click it here and it will be automatically entered so let's play the game and our game is almost over now i have completely filled this game and uh, one more feature i want to show you for example the time is 6 3 6 5 and if I pause the game right now at 6.12 and let it go for some time, you can pause the game anytime in between and if I again enter the game screen, note that the time started from 6.12 so this is the like pause function which i made it but i haven't specified a special key for here because a button because in pi game we don't have special keys or button we have to implement everything using keyboard press key press so let's submit this game and check if we are right or not okay so this is our saving screen and congratulations at the top yes we have successfully cleared the level and on this screen we can save the game with the current timing and the player name uh, you can enter the player name like this and this player name is stored in the local variable and the time collected from the game is also stored in the variable and all this name and time are combined in a single string and pass the saving function which appends a special key which is also a string in this entire thing and convert it into md5 hash and this md5 hash is then stored in the database of our game this md5 hash is stored along with the original name and the original score directly received from the game so at the time of fetching we can verify if the name and string matches with the combination of md5 hash just press enter to save the game and that's it this is our high score screen oops looks like i didn't meet in top 10 Okay, no problem. Uh, these are all my previous records. 
the advantage of game development is like when you are in testing and debugging stage you get a chance to play a lot so these are all that scores from the previous time the scores are arranged in ascending order and the scores are directly recovered from our main database there is a check function which is implemented like whenever we are requesting for scores from the database it checks the string the score and the special key and convert entire thing into md5 hash and verify the same hash which we have saved in our database while we were saving the game and if the both the keys hash matches itself then the scores are displayed on the screen i specially implemented this function so that the no one can tamper our database because no one can know the special key which is implemented in our code file and that's all on this screen and we can move back from here to our main menu let's play the game one more time this time i'm intentionally filling a single number in all the fields let us assume that number to be 